everybody welcome back to my channel my name is moon dancer how you guys doing in this video I am going to talk about the mythical creatures that I like to work with there are several uh, mythical creatures there are spiritual beings that are in this realm and in the spiritual realm they can go to both both realms and pretty much they can go to like any realm they want they're travelers I guess you can call them that they have magical powers some good some bad if one of these mythical creatures wind up in your life it's usually because they have a message for you or something to tell you either way there's always a reason that you just happen to see one so they could wind up being one of your guides they can be an other kin uh, some ways that they can appear in your life is through meditation through your dreams and you can also see them through your third eye so I mean if you got a the more powerful your third eye is the more likely you are to see one of these beautiful creatures which speaking of that throughout history and in some folklore they have also been known as fabulous creatures which I mean trust me most of them are fabulous so the name serves its purpose well I'm gonna go on into the mythical creatures that I like to work with and the first one I'm going to talk about is elves elves are nature spirits that can be in this realm or the elf realm and their elf realm is Alfheim that is where the light elves actually preside there are also dark elves and I cannot pronounce the name of where they preside so I will just include it like right in here somewhere <laughs> where you guys can just try to pronounce it yourselves good luck because <laughs> it's a doozy elves are very powerful uh, they're so powerful that it is said that it takes a really powerful witch to undo one of their spells so I mean that's a interesting little fact did not know that there are two different types of dark elves um, honestly I cannot pronounce those either so I will just fill that in on this video probably about right here so you guys can try to get that one yourselves too good luck anyways back on Alfheim it is said to be a beautiful very light like glorious place whereas the home of the dark elves is like dark and cold and kind of dreary I mean so you got that <laughs> some of the things that you can do with an elf is meditation divination they can uh, help you with your psychic abilities they can assist you with that so that's like some really cool things uh, the element that most corresponds with them is the earth element um, they're kind of like fairies in that way I mean they're not fairies but an elf or the elves and the fairies have a lot of similarities and we'll get to fairies here in a minute but uh, they're very spiritual too so I mean the spirit element which as everybody knows spirit is like literally all the elements it's everything you know it's 
space, you know, that kind of thing. So that's a little bit on elves. I would like to get, you know, more into it. But then I wouldn't have time to talk about all the other ones. <laughs> so we're not going to do that in this video. Now, fairies are very similar. They are also very powerful. And they they like to play tricks. They you got to watch them cuz they could be tricky little buggers. You know, uh like have you ever had something come up missing? And you look for it, and you look everywhere, and everywhere, and you look for it. And then five minutes later, it's right back in the spot where you left it the first time. Could be fairies. I'm not saying it is, I'm not saying it isn't, but it could be. Or have you seen that little glint, that little light, out of the corner of your eye, and then you turn to look, and there's nothing there. Could be a fairy. May not be. Who knows? That's why they're they're kind of they're kind of like little children in that way. Please, fairies, do not take that as an insult. Because I do not mean that as an insult. You have to watch what you say. Be respectful, because they will treat you as you treat them. If you are good to them then they'll be good to you. They're really good at gardening, keeping your flowers looking nice and pretty. However, if you've made them mad, well, you can say that stuff's gonna come up missing and it ain't gonna come back though. Like, it's literally gone forever. So, be nice to the fairies. Some different offerings that they like. They like milk, they like breads, they like fresh fruit and uh, vegetables. Um, they're really into that kind of stuff because they're very earthly beings too. Uh, they, I like to also use the element air with them because they do have wings and they can fly and even in some cultures they have different types of fairies like they specifically have air fairies earth fairies fire fairies water fairies so I mean you know you can I guess you can just use pretty much all, any element you want when you're working with them or asking them for help for your assistance or their assistance excuse me oh let's see <clears throat> there some magical things that you can do with them is again like meditation uh, your psychic abilities they're also really good healers so those are just some things to keep in mind that you can do with them. So, that's a little bit about fairies. Let's move on to the next one. <laughs> Hope you guys are still with me. The next my mythical creature that I like to work with is the phoenix. Um, as you should already know, the element that I work with when I'm working with the phoenix is fire. So doesn't like fire magic right the phoenix is a very gorgeous bird like it's in most cultures it's got or it's described as like a reddish purple color um and in many and different cultures have a different name for it like in Russia, it's the Firebird. Uh, in Native American, it's the Thunderbird. And in Egypt, it's Bennu. And I hope I'm saying that right. But either way, the major property or the major traits of the Phoenix is how it lives for up to 500 to 1400 years. And it knows when its time of death is 
and collects aromic woods and makes like a like a burn pile type thing like a bonfire or something and it goes up into flames but then it's reborn in its ashes yes I know Harry Potter that's what everybody's gonna automatically think of but no the Phoenix has been around way before Harry Potter was just saying and so a lot of the symbolism of the Phoenix is immortality death and rebirth so a lot of magical workings that you can do with the Phoenix is uh, death and rebirth spells like um, like I once made or yeah I once created my own ritual I wrote a list of problems or anything negative in my life or anything that I just needed to get rid of like be gone and I called upon the Phoenix and I I had come up with uh, my own chant um, I don't actually have it right in front of me so I can't actually tell you what it was but I lit this list on fire and therefore I was reborn out of the ashes I had all that negative stuff burnt away so also renewal spells that would work perfectly uh, and uh, yeah cleansing that would be another one so um, the other element that you can use to call upon the Phoenix of course is air because it is a bird I don't do that much because when I think of the Phoenix I think of fire but that's just me so that is the Phoenix my next mystical my, excuse me mythical creature is mermaids and I, you can already assume that the element I work with when I call upon mermaids is the water or water <laughs> the water <laughs> and it's good for they're really uh, beautiful creatures and they're said to have this most gorgeous voice and of course that's kind of where the siren comes in but uh, they are they represent like love and lust and but having like balance like they're good to call upon if you're in a relationship and you're not sure if it's love or lust they can actually assist you with that and help you yeah figure that kind of thing out uh, depending on what part of the world you're in there's two different sides I've one I've read that sailors see them as bad om bad omens that it means that their ship is not it was never gonna return to sea but then I've read other cultures, the sailors actually see them as good luck. So, depending on, you know, which culture you're reading about, there's two different stories there when it comes to, like, sailors spotting a mermaid. So, that kind of thing. <laughs> so, magical workings that you can do with a mermaid is cleansing spells. Like, self-cleansing. Um, like in the bath or in the shower uh, with some meditative music you know you can just close your eyes and imagine you in the sea and under the sea okay I just had to do that sorry guys but <laughs> but self-cleansing spells and also uh, cleansing your crystals if you use water however before you put water on a crystal make sure that it is okay to do that because some crystals you cannot put in water so before you do that research because you do not want to ruin your crystals 
and yeah, that'd be bad. You don't want to do that. So always research to make for sure that that particular kind of crystal that you're cleansing can have water on it without it dissolving into nothing. <laughs> so you want to do that. The mermaid is good for mirror scrying too. Like, I'm sure you notice if you watch The Little Mermaid, yes, I'm using that as a reference. She has a mirror that is actually uh, true. It's not just like a Disney made up thing or whatever. Uh, you can call upon them when you are doing uh, mirror screen, so that can be done. Uh, sometimes, like, they're really good to call upon just, just regular meditation, you know, not necessarily like in the bathtub or in the shower, you know, because just to listen to, like, just imagining being in the sea, like carrying the water and swimming with the mermaids. I mean, that, that alone is beautiful. And they are very beautiful creatures. And so, yeah. <laughs> that is mermaids. Sorry. My last one is unicorns. And the element that I most use when working with unicorns is spirit, which you can say, some people, you know, say it's not an element because it's all of them. Some people say it is an element. It's all what you feel, you know, because spirit, either Akasha, it's, it's infinite. It's everything. And to me, unicorns, since they're so majest majestic, or I think that's what I was looking for, and so, I mean, like, enchanting, like, I think they, like, overcome, like, everything, like, and it's even said that if you are wanting to see other spiritual beings, or magical creatures they can actually help you with that so they're really good with third eye work that's a great uh, magical working to call upon them for because like they have the eyes to see all that I mean other spiritual beings can see other spiritual beings anyway you would think but I guess they have the power to help you awaken your psychic abilities to see those kinds of other spiritual beings. So that is really awesome right there. And it is said that their horn has properties of healing, which if that consists of doing something mean to them, you know, then I'll just stay unhealed because that's just, that's disgusting. <laughs> I would not be mean to something so beautiful. And, yeah. If that's what it takes to get healed, well then, yeah, yeah. You know, don't just stay unhealed, you know. You, can, you stay in one piece and look beautiful. That's that. <laughs> they represent so many things. They represent it. Love. They represent magic. And they're, they're kind of childlike, you know, they help you awaken your inner child and they help you see all the magic in the world. And that's awesome. So, I mean, again, it kind of coincide, coincides with the third eye, you know, they want you to see, you know, they want you to see just how magical the world can be. So that's what makes these guys like awesome and so great to work with. So that is my five. The music is a really important 
myth, myth <laughs> excuse me, mythical creatures that I love to work with. And if you didn't catch on, I did elves, earth, fairies, air, the phoenix, fire, mermaids, water, unicorn spirit. Yes, I actually like did that on purpose <laughs> so that is my five mythical creatures and I hope you guys enjoyed hearing about them I will have not just a blog post but I will actually have a wiki post in the hatchling clan and probably in some of the other communities I'm in those links will be below you can find me in, I think, five different amino communities. And, like I said, below. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I will see you next time for who knows what. You never know what the Moon Dancer is going to post next or going to do next. So, you guys have a great day. Blessed be. And don't forget to dance under the moon. Superstitions, black hats and voodoo dolls. I've got a premonition that girl's gonna make me fall.